That means, therefore, that we experience the present filled up with all of the urgency of God and we experience it as a gift. Instead of saying, I'll be happy and contented and rejoice and holy later. No, no. Later may not exist. Now is the time to experience God's gift and to live in gratitude and joy to God because that's the gift, the gift of the present moment. That's what we have. The the rich fool was a fool because he thought that he had all of the time in the world. And as it turned out, his time had run out. That's why he was a throne. He thought that he had years to come and he had no time left whatsoever. So that's the first thing, to be wise in God, not to be a throne, not to be brainless. We need to recognize the urgency and the opportunity that God has built into the present moment. Second thing is to recognize that the futility and stupidity of pursuing mammon as your main goal. Our Lord was real clear. He said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Now, he doesn't mean that you can't have money and be, and be spiritual. St. Paul tells you how to have money and, and be spiritual, mostly by giving lots of it away. Uh, but you can, it's not the case uh, that St. Francis was saying. St. Francis was saying, God bless him, uh, that if you're going to be a Christian, the real Christians are absolutely dirt poor. The real Christians own nothing. They sleep under bridges and get their money from begging. Actually, that's what he said. God love him. It was just a wonderful person that he is, but Frankie was wrong about this. This was not quite... You can't... So, it doesn't mean that you give away all that you have and go live under a bridge and survive by panhandling or something like this. Um, but it does mean that if we are going to make the pursuit of mammon, if our, our main goal in life, if we're going to say fulfillment comes through having money, and preferably more and more and more and more money, if you make pursuit of mammon your life's goal, then you cannot serve God. You can't serve God and mammon because mammon is like a deity. Mammon will, if you, if you don't tame it, it will devour you. It will consume all of your life. It will demand your heart as fully as God demands your heart. So you have to figure out, mammon makes an, an okay servant but a lousy master. So you have to choose who you're going to give your heart to. If you're going to give your heart to God, then you can't give your heart to mammon. Mammon becomes a servant. If you're going to say it's all about making money, okay, then you can, you can say I'm a very religious person. Yes, you are, but you're not a Christian. You can be very religious, but you cannot be a servant of God if you are devoting all of your life to the pursuit of mammon. This is why it's so dangerous to live in North America. Because we are surrounded by our affluence, and affluence has the effect of dulling our spiritual sensitivity. That's why we should live as simply as we can. And we are surrounded by lies. Every time you turn on the television, every time you listen to the radio, open a magazine, you are breathing in the poisonous atmosphere of lies. And the lies that they are saying to you consists in one form or another of advertising and saying, if you would only buy this thing, or an iPod or a X-Pod or a whatever, that, <laughs> whatever that, some sort of pod or iPhones or all that, the, the latest gadget, the latest, the latest gizmo. If you will only do this, you will have eternal life or next best thing. You'll be, you'll have joy. And, and if you do not buy it, you cannot have any happiness. You cannot have any contentment. Your life is over. You might as well just curl yourself off of a bridge because there's no contentment, no joy for you. It's all about buying stuff, which is to say our stuff, not their stuff, buy our stuff. The iPod is better than the X-Pod or the, <laughs> the Z-Pod or whatever they got there. The iPods, iPhones, you notice how many of it remarkably start with the word I. It's a little bit, a little bit alarming in spots. Anyway, so, but that's the lie, that's the propaganda. So wisdom consists in realizing that we spend most of our lives being lied to. So we need to recognize propaganda for what it is. And over against all of these propaganda, you need to get a little stamp, you know, with those little stamps that, that you can make with the words of the, of the Lord, but he says, even when one has an abundance, life still does not consist of a man's possessions, which he said in Luke's Gospel of this particular parable, and whenever you look at ad in the, in the paper which says, you must buy this or you cannot be happy, get the stamp, and you're going to stamp it, on top of the thing, to say, here's what God thinks of you, you know, mindless, affron, brainless, and it's going to stamp on the thing. We need, we are walking in dangerous times, we are breathing poisonous air. The antidote for the propaganda is the gospel. 
The antidote for it is, that's why we, we read the scripture so much, because we turn from the world of lies to the world of timeless truth. So that's the second thing. First, the urgency of the present moment. The second, the futility of making mammon our main goal. And the last thing is to be rich in God. We need to build for ourselves purses which cannot grow old, which uh, the stock markets rising and falling cannot touch. Thieves cannot break in and steal was the ancient <coughs> equivalent. Uh, rust and moth cannot consume. Someone said you can't take it with you. That's true, but you can send it on ahead. If you give, as, as the proverb says, the one who gives to, uh, gives to the poor loans to his maker, and God will repay it. Proverb also says the rich and the poor have this in common. They meet together, literally, in the Hebrew. You, uh, in the ancient world, the rich were very rich and the poor were very poor, and you might say they have nothing in common. But yes, they have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. So when you give to the poor, whether it's with the food bank or the... They have the socks for the poor, or our own diaconia program, or food for the hungry, or doctors without borders, or whatever we do, whatever we give to the poor, we are loaning to the Lord, and the Lord will, will repay us, if not in this age, then in the age to come. There, there are all sorts of concern about how's your bank account doing, and that's fair enough. When, they, when the bills come in, it, you can't admittedly say to all of your creditors, well, I have no money, but in the age to come, I'm loaded. So if you can just wait until I <laughs> will not fly. So, okay, so fair enough. So you've got to have as much money in your bank account to at least keep the creditor away and the wolves uh, far back from the door. But don't let the necessity for paying our bills, um, and don't buy a Porsche, not you know, dumb bills, you know, paying the, the reasonable bills. Don't let this um, uh, cause us to forget where our real treasure is. Our real treasure is, is not here. Real treasure consists of building up purses in the kingdom of God. So that when we give to the poor, God will repay us. If not in this age, then in the age to come. This is the real challenge. The rich fool had a golden opportunity. The parable and the story of the rich fool could have ended differently. Instead of saying, a man's... Uh, 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 fields brought forth abundantly and he could have said and he was a wise person and he took that extra and gave it to the poor and lived happily ever after and when he died God said well done good and faithful servant. Wouldn't have been as exciting as a, 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 a parable but it would have ended better for him. They had the opportunity had he known to say soon I'm going to die. I don't realize this but next spring after I've uh, uh, building season is over and I pulled on my barns and built larger ones God will say to me this night your soul is required of you. So since I know that I, I, that might be coming, I will give to the poor now. Had the opportunity to do that, and he did not. We have the opportunity. We can learn from his mistakes about the urgency of the present moment, about the folly of the propaganda which surrounds us at every, at every step of our way, and about the possibility of storing up purses in the age to come. Doesn't matter how your bank account on earth is doing. Well, it matters a, a, a little bit. But after you die, it will cease to matter at all. And what, what really matters is how is your bank account in the kingdom of God doing? In those days, when you reach the kingdom of God, when you reach the other side, will you find yourself rich in God or will you find yourself utterly destitute? Because you thought it was all about accumulating toys down here. That's the challenge. The rich fool was rich and ultimately a throne and brainless. We have the opportunity to be wise in God and to be rich in the Lord in this age and especially in the age to come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.